The purpose of this video is to demonstrate and show you guys how to set up for an arterial line insertion. A physician might order or ask you to set this up on a patient that is either going to require frequent um, ABGs or blood gases to determine how much oxygen is in their um, periphery, or they also might um, order this if you're giving vasoactive meds and this is something that us as nurses can kind of promote. If you have a patient that you're titrating dopamine or levofed for, for a low blood pressure, this is an um, excellent device to use. So we need to be a little bit proactive when it comes to that. Um, arterial lines can go in three locations. They can go in the or renal artery. They can also go in the um, brachial artery and the femoral artery. The difference between them, the most popular is the radial artery, and the reason for that is simply because it's easiest to get to. There tends not to be a lot of fat in that area. Um, the patient, uh, if they were to bleed, you could also apply pressure quite easily. Um, and so it tends to be um, the area of choice for physicians. The complications, of course, with any of them is infection but they also can have some nerve damage in that spot. Um, and so we just wanna be careful on making sure that the physician does an Allen's test um, to make sure that there's adequate blood flow prior to putting in the insertion. The next one is the brachial artery. And although that is um, a little bit larger in size and um, artery, it tends to be a little bit more complicated because the patient has to kind of keep their elbow straight and so it prevents um, immobility. And again, um, there tends to be a little bit more fat tissue in that area, so if they were to bleed, it'd be a little harder to stop the bleeding. Um, the femoral artery, the same thing, a little harder to stop bleeding. It's a good large vein, but you run a higher risk of infection, especially in that area, just due to hygiene issues. So again, most popular is the radial artery. Um, so if the physician orders it and says, you know, let's go ahead and set this up, what you need to do is go ahead and get the supplies that they're gonna need because it's gonna take them a little bit. They have to don in their PPE, so mask, gown, um, and hat, um, and then. So you're gonna wanna get the physician the things that they're gonna need, and that includes an A-line kit, um, and this is kept in the bottom drawer in the central line. Um, you're also gonna want to get your tubing. Um, and so you either have a single package or a double package. Uh, really for all purposes in the ER, we only need a single package or the single um, pressure tubing bag. If you feel comfortable and you get used to it, go ahead and put the double up. And the reason for the double is simply that the ICU uses this to monitor CVP or whatever other things that they would need a pressure bag for. So it's really up to you uh, which tubing you want to use. Um, the difference one has, a, like I said, a secondary um, pressure bag, um, and this one just only has a single. So you'll want to get one of these. You also want to go ahead and get your 500 cc saline bag, again, kept in the, the central line um, cabinet, and then also a pressure tubing bag. You'll want to get an extra chlor prep for the physician so that they um, can clean up the site after they have inserted it and sewed it down. Uh, you'll actually want to get the the A-line itself or the needle, and this is kept separately. So if they aren't able to get access into the line, they're still sterile, you can get them a new one if they ask, so they don't have to get a whole new tray. So here's the needle. Um, you'll need to get them a bio patch to put on after insertion. Um, they'll typically sew down the A-line, and then you can put this over again, blue to the sky or, or, or up. Um, here's your tegaderm to secure the device. Again, sterile gloves for the doc, um, and that's it. You're ready to go. So I got my doc his stuff, and he's um, prepping the site or whatever. Um, I'm going to go ahead and start my tubing. So I kind of already had this in the pressure bag, but what you do is you would spike your 500 cc bag, and you would go ahead and slip it into your pressure tubing bag, and then you would go ahead and pump this up to 300 or to that green mark. I don't know if you can see that on this video here. Um, I always think green means good, so go to the green mark. Um, and again, that's 300 um, merc of mercury. So you go ahead and you got all this, and then next step is to really make sure you go through and you check your connections. A lot of times this tubing comes very loose in the package, 
Um, so sometimes you might not even have a piece attached. So make sure you go through and you check your device. Um, go ahead and unroll your clamp. And the first step is to really go ahead and prime this first section. So I'm, what I'm doing is I'm priming from the bag um, to this spot here. This is the spot that goes to the patient. This tubing is a little bit harder. Um, so if you think like the hard part kind of goes to the patient, some people think it that way. But what I want to do again is um, go ahead and flush this side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it off. Wherever that pointy thing is is where it goes off. I'm going to open this up um, and I'm going to go ahead and squeeze this. And this is what allows uh, the water to come out. So you can see that. So you go ahead and you make sure you got all the water come out or all the saline and the bubbles are out. And then you replace it with the yellow caps that are kept in the bag. These caps actually have no holes in the top of it where these cap actually do have a hole that goes directly through and air can, you know, or whatever can get through. So it's very important that you replace the cap. Then you go ahead and turn off to that side because you've already flushed that and you want to flush the rest of this. So it's important to have this engaged and then go ahead and flush. And I'll show you an example of that white. See how the water is coming right out of there. So, so you have everything all flushed, primed, ready to go, and now it's time to zero. Uh, the reason we zero is to take away the atmospheric pressure from the patient's pressure, so we don't want that interfered. So you're gonna go ahead and um, get your red cable, looks like this, um, and you're gonna insert it into the red spot on our monitors. Um, and you're just gonna insert it into that first. And then after doing that, you're gonna go ahead and you're gonna plug your connector from your, your A-line tubing to your connector here, and it's just like an old telephone cord kind of deal there. Um, this spot is actually kept at the flevostatic acid or the fourth intercostal space. So it's actually just kind of like right here under the armpit. I tend to work on the opposite side of the physician, so if he's working on the left, I'm doing this on the right. And I go to zero it, I tape it either to the bed in that position or I tape it to the actual patient in that position. So that I know that where I zeroed it, it's gonna be the same once it's accessed. Um, so if you look at my monitor right now, you will see uh, that this is actually set up for CVP. It says it right there, it says it right there, and it's also blue lines, okay? We always want, um, red is arterial, so we always want this and uh, you wanna switch it over, you go ahead and click this, you select right here, and you go to art. And then that automatically switches it over into a red tubing, okay? Once I have that, I'm gonna go to zero my um, tubing. And what I wanna do is actually zero it to atmospheric pressure, right? So I want this open. So I'm gonna turn it off to the patient or to that hard coil. I'm gonna open this up. And then I'm gonna go down here and I'm gonna hit zero all pressures right here. And I'm gonna hit that button. And what's gonna happen is it's gonna hit zero, zero. And then I know I have actually zeroed um, the device. So you go ahead and replace your little yellow cap, just like that, um, and then close it off to atmospheric pressure. And now I wait for the physician. So once the physician actually says, hey, I'm ready for you, you um, take the little white tab off and use um, as much aseptic technique as you possibly can, and you kind of work together to get it onto that catheter. And then once in place, you're going to go ahead and flush the device because you have to remember his catheter is full of blood, so you gotta go and flush it, because in that spot line you should get your, um, your waveform. Um, to secure the device, he's actually gonna sew it down, so he'll sew his little tabs down, and then you're gonna flip this around and put it around the thumb and take that big tugiderm and slap it on just like that. So um, there's no way to pull this, you kinda have a second securement device or a loop, um, and it's a good position. Once you've done that, um, you can go ahead and draw your labs. And the way we do that is you get this little device here, um, and it's kept in the central line cart. Um, it's called a shielded blunt cannula, and it looks like this. So you take it out of the package, and you put your little syringe on. And then when I want to go draw blood, this is what that weighs. This is that syringe that we used to weigh. So it's open linear, we pull back, 
This is going to be all blood. It's going to be mixed blood and saline. And we want to turn this off because we don't want to pull from here. So this would all be full of blood if it was in a patient. And you go to this site right here. You clean it off with a alcohol wipe or chlorhexidine. You take this and you plunge it on here. And then you go ahead and dry your specimen. Now it's important if you're going to switch syringes that you don't just untwist because this will shoot blood and remember it's in an artery so it's important that you actually kind of pull it off take off your syringe switch syringes and then press it back on okay and then once you're done um, you've got your labs you go ahead and you twist this back into the on position and you flush push everything back in you give them back their blood clamp it in place and then you um, flush. And you flush until you have no bubbles or no blood in your line, um, and then you should have a nice waveform again. So let's go through um, zeroing. You would zero um, an A-line before you put it in, after each lab draw, um, and every four hours that the patient was here. Um, the next thing to look at is the dampen waveform. So I'm gonna draw, or attempt to draw a picture of a waveform and what the waveform look, will look like um, is it'll come up and then it'll come down and then down, up, and then you'll have this notch and down. So this upward motion is um, systole um, and that's the contraction of the heart. And then this part right here is called the diacrotic notch. Um, and we look for that because what happens is Yes, the heart is contracted, but it's also left a little blood back behind, and it kind of rebounds against the aortic valve, and that causes this little blip in the, in the waveform. The downward um, direction is diastole, or diastolic pressure, um, and then you'll have this kind of nice, symmetrical, even waveform. If you had a dampened waveform, you're going to see something like this. There's not going to be any notch. It's just going to be kind of wavy. It may even be squatty. It just doesn't look right. Um, reasons for that would be hypotension, so they don't have enough high, blood high enough blood pressure for it. Um, there's a kink in the line. They've bent the wrist. There's a connection um, that's kind of loosened up. There's not fluid in their bag. There's not enough pressure in the bag. So once you've kind of gone through all of that, um, and you're still getting blood pressures that are low, check a manual blood pressure. It's always important to make sure that they correlate, even to the point where you wanna make sure after one's put in, you do one um, to make sure that it correlates. Uh, they should be about 20 points off for me, next to each other. If it goes above 20 points, then you kinda of wanna ask the physician which one they wanna go by. So, I, so back to, if I have a low blood pressure, I've checked all that, I've checked the blood pressure, it's accurate. Um, go ahead and treat the blood pressure. Um, you also, of course, if you have no line, want to make sure the patient uh, has a pulse. You know, uh, that's important too. So really about it. As far as assessment wise, um, make sure you document that you added um, an arterial line um, and make sure you're documenting CMS. So CMS prior and CMS afterwards. We want to make sure their fingers are pink, um, that they have good sensation, that they're um, that they're able to move their hands, etc. So if you have any questions about this, um, please feel free to ask the education team. Otherwise, there is gonna be information in Lowe's B Consult. Um, and again, all this equipment or the practice tubing is kept in the educator cabinets in the um, old, old ambulance bay. And so feel free to go in there and play with it. So thank you very much.